Hi hey guys, this is Jake with Think Free Live Free and today I'd like to share with you my 3000 watt grow watt inverter. Um, I've started connecting that um, and getting that set up so that I can have a better idea of how I need to uh, install it in my van. Um, so I just wanted to show you what I did um, and also uh, some of the issues that I had and um, some things that might help you on your uh, grow what inverters um, for example that annoying beeping sound um, I'll show you how to shut that off um, and also I got a error code um, 81 and I was trying to look that up on the internet and there was nobody that um, explained how to get rid of that I ended up having to call um, grow what uh, support and they were able to help me with that so um, so I just wanted to share that so that um, whoever runs into that 81 error uh, they can maybe look at this video and fix it themselves without having to call technical support. Specifications of this Grow Watt, um, it's got a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, it's got um, an 80 amp MPPT charge controller built into it. And then it also has an AC input and an AC output. Um, so the AC input will provide you with 60 amps of uh, shore power charger um, or a transfer switch. Um, so you are able to charge your batteries uh, with shore power with this directly, um, which is really nice. This is the 24 volt unit. Um, it also does come in a 48 volt unit. I have my positive and my negative cable running from my battery into these terminals here. You get your negative and your positive. And then the positive cable I have running, I have a, a fuse here, a bolt-on fuse, um, a 175 amp. I'm running 4 gauge wire, so, uh, but pure copper wire. This is my 24 volt battery. I have it connected in series right now. You have your your negative here. Um, I will connect that now. Um, but before I connect that, I use a small capacitor here and pre-charge the capacitors uh, in the grow watt inverter so that you don't get a spark. It's just a lot safer to do it like that. Um, and then I have an extension cord here that I cut off. This is a 12-2 extension cord. And this is for the AC input. I do not currently have my AC out um, hooked up. Uh, this is was basically a test to see if everything works. So, okay, I think this has been charging long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these. So as you can see there, it's just connected with a bolt. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my AC power here. So the AC charger um, will charge up to 60 amps. Um, when it charges from the wall, it's rated at 30 amps. Um, you can also set in your settings uh, a combined charging between solar and AC for um, I believe it's so if you hold in the enter button it will go into the settings menu so the combined uh, amperage at the moment for solar and utility charger is 50 amps and you can hear that the inverter is now switching over and charging on the 
AC charger. I can show you the so the battery voltage right now is 27.1 amps. If I keep pressing the up or down button, it will actually show me how many amps are coming in. So the amp reading right now for the AC charger is 30 amps. And it charges pretty quickly when the battery is not too low. Um, you can also see here the charging light is on so this is a very simple uh, connection here it does have a 40 amp as you can see there it has a 40 amp breaker for the AC input side by the way that annoying beep that you get uh, once you connect this unit the first time um, it's very simple you're gonna press the down arrow and to enter at the same time for about three seconds so you hold these together and you'll and it will turn off that annoying sound it's still going to do a beeping sound when it starts up but as you can see here if i press enter um and go through the selection see it's on one right now okay so you hear that so you're hearing that beeping sound now i'm going to press escape so you go to the regular menu and I'm going to press down and enter at the same time. And it's, there was a little speaker icon here that's gone now. So if I go into the menu now and I press down, see, there's no beeping sound. So that's an easy way to turn off that beeping sound. Um, down and enter at the same time for about two seconds. On the main menu you want to definitely get out of this I'm not gonna go into the settings too much um, I think that you can read that in your book and uh, it, it will also be specified according to your battery I have it set up on utility first right now um, and then I have it charging at a combined charge of 50 amps if I press enter here, you can change this value up to, I believe, 100 amps. So this will charge through utility and um, solar input at 100 amps. I have mine set on use for sele uh, selection number five for your batteries because um, I'm running lithium phosphate um, you will set that up according to your own batteries uh, so I have the the AC charger is set at 30 amps um, which is by default 30 amps I don't believe it can do higher than 30 amps with the AC charger And then uh, these are some other settings that you can read in the book. Um, I think the important ones though are... So here's my bulk. Bulk charge is 28.4. And then my float I set at 27.6. And then my low cutoff, which I think is probably one of the uh, most important is set at 23 volts which is the equivalent of um, I believe I don't have my calculator with me but I, I calculated this with having eight cells is the equivalent of 2.9 volts on the lower end of my cells um, so the DC low cutoff uh, is set at 23 volts So this is what I wanted to show you, um, selection number 23. When I turned on my inverter the first time, I had a fault reading here. It went red. And um, this was set, it's at sig, sig now, single, single phase. Um, but it was set at t uh, 2P2, so it was um, set up in split phase. And I just have a single grow watt inverter, so I was going to run it in single phase. 
So all I had to do was change this over to So you wanted to, if you have one inverter, you wanted to say single SIG there and press enter. And that will remove the error code 81. I hope that's helpful for people out there that gets, gets this inverter and for some reason your inverter was set at double phase uh, and you're getting this error code 81 and you're not sure what to do. Um, this will fix that and it's on selection 23 you set that at uh, SIG single phase and shut off your inverter go out of go out of the menu press escape and then shut the inverter off so as you can see here the battery has been charged up we're at 27.5 volts I just turned the inverter on. So I just wanted to uh, share how to turn off that um, annoying beeping sound and that error code 81 that I got. Um, by the way, I will leave the telephone number for GrowWatt uh, support in the description if you're interested and you have other error codes that's coming up. Um, they're extremely helpful they're a little bit hard to reach um it usually goes to a voicemail saying that if you have a problem to leave your phone number and they'll call you back if you do hang up they will still call you back so they're uh trying really hard to uh deliver good customer service and f from what i've experienced they're doing a pretty good job i wanted to share with you um how i have that set up right now um, I do not have the AC output set up, but basically this AC output is going to go to a breaker box that I'm going to have um, AC breakers in there. It's going to it's going to serve a 30 amp service, and then I'm going to have 15 and 20 amp uh, circuits running. So I will be doing 10-3 wire on the output so that I can run that 30 amp service. But yeah, it's quite simple. You remove these, this panel here. Um, it has four screws. And then uh, you wanna make sure to connect your battery wires first without it being connected to the battery. So you're gonna connect these first and then you'll connect your red wire, your positive with some kind of uh, fuse to protect your wire from your battery. I have 175 amp because it's rated for this uh, four gauge copper cable. That's how I came up with 175 amps because the cable is rated at, at those amps. And last, you will connect your negative wire but make sure to use a resistor here so that you can pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter so you don't get a huge spark, um, especially at 24 volts. With a 3000 watt inverter, you definitely want to do that. Well, I hope this helps uh, people out there um, wondering how to connect things. Um, the AC input was very simple. You got your neutral white wire and then you got your load your live wire and then you got your green wire um, and it says it all right there on the on the side as well it has really nice terminals this is a 12.3 the wire had no problem uh, this is four gauge wire coming from the battery um, and then if you want to connect your solar panels it will go into this one and you got your positive and negative here for your solar panels. And then uh, the AC out is at the bottom there. But um, guys, it's quite simple. And um, I am going to be connecting a kill switch between my battery and the inverter um, eventually. But I just wanted to get this up and running and see how it's working. 
um, I need to start building a battery box for my batteries to go into the van and then I have to figure out how I'm gonna mount this in the van and uh, exactly where um, and then as I said I'm gonna be running a breaker panel from the AC out in the van I just wanted to share with you um, some of those things and hopefully they help somebody out there that's stuck or uh, that's nervous about um, getting getting their grow watt inverter uh, connected and set up and to test it um, by the way this is suggested to uh, be standing this up you know not laying down like this but this is very temporary I just wanted to do this uh, setup for this video and just wanted to show you some things um, on the main panel here if you press the up or down arrow it will give you information there um, there it gives you the battery voltage um, it's showing you actual load here in watts um, the current that it's currently drawing 18 volts so you can play around with that a little bit at some point I'll do a more detailed video on settings um, I did show you my settings a little bit I think uh, setting 21 the low DC cutoff is probably the most important setting for anybody with LiFo batteries um, or any other battery for that matter depending on your battery chemistry um, that setting will definitely change uh, for LiFo batteries I have mine set at 23 volts um, divided by 8 which brings it down to I, I believe 2.9 volts um, I don't want it to go lower than that I know that I can go down to 2.6 or 2.7 um, I don't want it to go that low in case any of the cells are a little bit um, not perfectly balanced. Um, and my top range I set at 28.4. Um, I believe that comes out to about 3.55 volts uh, per cell. Um, so also I'm not going all the way full and I'm not going all the way down. Um, so that that's up to you how you want to set that. Um, but I'm going to be running uh, mostly solar uh, I'm not going to be using shore power that often I will also have uh, a Victron um, alternator charger that I'll be setting up with this unit that's going to provide me with a uh, 15 amp charge from my alternator which I believe comes out to about 240 watts uh, charging so um, anyway uh, guys thank you for watching um, please if you like the content please hit the like button please subscribe and please share these videos um, it, hit, it really helps the channel grow um, I do appreciate you guys watching and I appreciate everybody that subscribed um, all right well guys thank you for watching and you take care